Let's see, the mic is on, the intro is playing, I think it's a good time to get things started. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Animation Podcast, a weekly podcast about all things animation, brought to you by Filmbook. My name is Bad Brunet, but some of you may know me as Animat from my YouTube channel, Electric Dragon 505 home of web series that are all about animation, including Animation Look Back and Animat's Reviews. Now, if this is your first time here in the Animation Podcast, well, let me tell you, you came in at a time where I got a whole bunch of new announcements, including new voices and also new movies that will be coming up. Like, for example, we got another Henry Selleck stop-motion animated feature coming up, which is going to be the reunion of the great dynamic duo of Key and Peele. Then afterwards, we will be looking at a brand new DreamWorks animation film that's, ag- that's going to be all about the bad guys. Then afterwards, we will be talking about Nicolas Cage getting a second chance from an unlikely movie. Then afterwards, we will be talking about Pitbull, where he is going to put his toes back into animation again with ugly dolls. And then finally, we're going to end things off with Animat's Pick of the Week. Now, if you want to check out more episodes of the Animation Podcast, then all you have to do is go to Filmbook, which is film-book.com, by searching the Animation Podcast. You can also email us at podcast at filmbook.com with the Animation Podcast in the subject line. And so, for our first story right over here, we got a big reunion. But not only that, we got a really big collaboration. These are pretty much two legends in their own field. And we got a little bit of, like I said before, a small reunion that is going on between two comedy legends. And the fact that they're all working together really does sound like something that people are really going to be hyping up for, and honestly, people are hyping up for in this case, which is actually going to be a movie called Wendell and Wild. So, you might be wondering, what is Wendell and Wild? Well, apparently, this is going to be the great big reunion of Key and Peele, where Jordan Peele and Keegan-Michael Key are going to be the stars of the movie, of a film in which is going to be directed by Henry Selleck. And yes, this will be in stop motion. Now, Henry Selleck is not only going to be directing the film, but he is also going to be writing the film and producing the film. On top of that, this entire movie is actually based on Selleck's idea. And in terms of the script itself, uh, Henry Selleck will be collaborating with Jordan Peele and Clay McLeod uh, Chapman in order to go and craft this film in script form. But apparently at the same time, uh, if I may read a little bit of my source here, on Deadline it stated, While the movie moves forward, a deal has been made with Simon & Schuster for a book to be written by Chapman & Selleck to be published around the film's release. So that's pretty much the big thing. Oh, actually, hold on a sec. Uh, I almost forgot about one thing about this movie because there's also another big figure that is involved. It's not just Key and Peele. It's not just Henry Selleck. But also, there's going to be Pablo Lobato. Uh, Pablo Lobato is actually a very well-known uh, Argentinian artist known for his caricatures of many different celebrities in a more abstract way, almost like a, a Picasso in a sense. He will actually be into the project where he will be designing the characters of the movie. And that's pretty much the big project that is going on. They really got some big legends in here. They got Henry Selleck, the director of films such as The Nightmare Before Christmas, uh, James and the Giant Peach, and of course Coraline. And on top of that, they also got Key and Peele, where they are going to be the stars and they will lend their comedic hand onto the project. And especially with Jordan Peele, where he will add an extra hand to work on the script as well. And on top of that... We're going to get some interesting character designs brought to you by Pablo Lobato, which, considering how his works are very 2D, it's going to be interesting to see how his works can come to life in the third dimension. Or, at the very least, when I say third dimension, not necessarily in, um, in like, a computer animated sense, but I mean more, like, in, in a way where... It has a lot more depth in a sense, because you'll see, like if you Google uh, many of Pablo Lobato's works, you'll find that it's it's very flat. Like I said before, it's a very Picasso-like piece. Uh, they're more abstract, they're more dependent on shapes to form the people. 
But uh, now that they're going to be coming out in 3D, it will be very fascinating to see what we get. It could be something uh, maybe in the veins of what we got with Paranorman, where there's no such thing as a straight line. And, like, you see how, like, the facial structures can be a little bit crooked and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, so far I will say, however, that when it comes to Wendell and Wilde, we don't really got an idea of what the plot is actually going to be. All we got is just, um, this little excerpt from Deadline saying that Key and Peele will supply the voices of two scheming demon brothers. And that's pretty much it. And also, there is one thing I would like to add, considering that it is Netflix that's going to be uh, collaborating to work on this project. They will be distributing it and also financing the project. This is actually not the first time that they do have a stop-motion animated feature in the works that they will go and distribute. Uh, they also got a movie called Bubbles, which is going to be based on Michael Jackson's pet chimp. And that's going to be entirely stop-motion animated, made by the same studio that brought us Anomalisa. And the movie will be directed by Mark Gustafsson and also uh, Taika Waititi, who just recently directed Thor Ragnarok. So that's pretty much the big thing. And with Netflix, they actually got Bubbles last year when they bought it from an auction at the Cannes Film Festival. And so that's pretty much the big thing with Wendell and Wilde, where you got a whole bunch of legends like Henry Selleck, Jordan Peele, and Keegan-Michael Key, and you also got some collaboration with Pablo Lobato, and of course the help of Clay McLeod Chapman, where they're all going to be working together in this one big project. Oh, and uh, actually, before I continue, there is one more thing I would like to mention, that when it comes to Henry Selleck, this is not his only project that he has coming up. I know it's been a long time since we've heard from him, but uh, he is currently collaborating with Joe and Anthony Rousseau. Yes, the same Rousseau brothers that are going to be releasing Avengers Infinity War later this uh, later uh, in late April. And uh, they're actually going to be working together to make a TV adaptation uh, based on the hit game Little Nightmares. But, okay, anyways, I got all my information out of the way regarding everything around, like, the people working on it and the movie itself. So, with Wendell and Wilde, I honestly am really excited on this because uh, one big thing for me as an animation fan, I am excited to see the great comeback of Henry Selleck doing what he does best. Because you gotta keep in mind, the last movie that he did was Coraline, and that was back in 2009, so it's almost... 10 years ago and honestly I feel absolutely shocked that I said that because of the fact that a movie like Coraline is almost 10 years old my god I am actually getting old it is kind of scary actually but yeah honestly Henry Selleck really is one of those names that really is synonymous with stop motion animation and when you would see some of his works, you could tell that he knows the craft of this medium. He knows how to build it up in order to create something beautiful with it and something highly creative. And it really did show not only with Coraline, but also with James and the Giant Peach and, of course, The Nightmare Before Christmas. And I would even throw in Monkey Bone, like, say what you will about the movie, but it does have a lot of great stop-motion animation and a lot of uh, creative moments as well. But on top of that, another element that does make me really excited about this movie is actually the reunion of Keegan-Michael Key and Jordan Peele. Now, it actually is very interesting the fact that we do see Jordan Peele as the star of this movie, considering that not too long ago, I think maybe about a month ago, we have heard about the news that Jordan Peele said that he quit acting due to the poor treatment that he received from Sony Animation when he was offered the role of the poop emoji. And from there, he vowed never to go and uh, act in another movie again. But it's very fascinating that at this point, we see Jordan Peele is actually going to be coming back as the star. Uh, but not only that, but also like really collaborating hard because he's also going to be a writer and he's also going to be a producer with Henry Selleck. So I don't know what really made him change his mind with this project in particular. Maybe he was really intrigued with the idea or maybe he just wants to re-collaborate with Keegan-Michael Key again. Uh, but either way, I am actually very excited because the thing is with Jordan Peele, I am really happy for him that 
he has found a new direction in his career, a very successful new direction where he has now become an Oscar winning filmmaker that can be taken seriously, especially after his last film, Get Out, which was really amazing. But even though he, nowadays he is considered a treasure in uh, the movie industry, I don't want him to go away from being a treasure of comedy because he has given a lot of amazing material when he was working with Keegan-Michael Key and Key and Peele. And honestly, that's the one thing I don't want to see go away is the comedy side of Jordan Peele and collaborating with Keegan-Michael Key to give us some amazing bits. And honestly, like that, that that's the one thing that I am worried about. And also, what, what's funny though is that one of my favorite images that I saw coming from this year's Oscars, uh, apparently it was at an after party where you see Keegan-Michael Key, he has his Oscar for best writing in Get Out, and you see the reunion uh, with, uh, did I say Keegan-Michael Key or Jordan Peele? Well, anyways, where Jordan Peele actually got his Oscar for best original screenplay for Get Out, and then you see the reunion with Keegan-Michael Key, like he came in and gave him a great big hug, and honestly, it's like one of the sweetest and one of the best pictures that I saw from this year's Oscars. And I don't, I don't want to see Key and Peele like pretty much be gone. Like I want to see Jordan Peele still do some comedy. Like, I, yeah, definitely. I want to see him do more movies in the veins of Get Out. But if he could do more comedy as well, I would definitely be happy. So seeing this happen, it, it really is awesome because it really is promising us that we've haven't, we haven't had in a long time. Not just a Henry Selleck movie, but also a Key and Peele movie. And I know technically that would mean that, like, this movie is getting a lot of pressure now because there's a lot of anticipation considering those two elements are together. But honestly, I really do hope for the best for the project. Um, I really do wish the best of luck for Henry Selleck, uh, Key and Peele, and for the rest of the people that are going to be working on this movie. Hopefully it could turn out into something great. But yeah, this is definitely funny enough. Uh, it's kind of weird saying this, but this is a Netflix movie I am really excited to go and check out. Now, we don't know when specifically Netflix is going to release this film or if this movie is currently in production or if they finished the project or something like that. Like, we don't know how far where they are. We don't know when there's going to be a release date. But yeah, this is something that I feel like for animation fans and especially myself, this is going to be something that we got to keep an eye on. If you're a fan of stop motion, if you're a fan of Henry Selleck, if you're a fan of animation, if you're a fan of Key and Peele, and if you're a fan of Jordan Peele's works, like if you're a fan of Get Out as well, you got to you got to keep an eye on this one. This could probably be the next big Netflix movie. Now, moving right along to our next story that we got right over here, we're going to be heading to DreamWorks Animation where they have announced a brand new animated feature that they would like to get their hands on. And lately, you might have noticed that they have been looking a lot into kids' books where they would use that as the source of inspiration in order to make their movies. And apparently this is actually one of them. And what I'm talking about is actually a recent book that has been released by Scholastics at the end of 2016 called The Bad Guys, which was written by Aaron Blabby. And the story of The Bad Guys you might find it a little bit familiar, like, yeah, you might have heard this type of story before, but basically what the story goes is that you got four groups of people, or four groups of animals, or, yeah, I think I think that's the best way to put it, four group, like, four animals that people would normally see them as the bad guys. You got Mr. Wolf, Mr. Shark, Mr. Snake, and Mr. Piranha. Now, Normally, these are predator animals, and when people see them, they would scream and run away. But, the thing with these animals, these particular animals, is that they don't want to be seen as the bad guys anymore, and now they want to try to find a way in order to be perceived as good. Like, they want to go ahead and be, like, the hero in a way. Like, let's just say there is a little bit of Wrecked Ralph in there, where the animals are pretty much trying to say, I don't want to be the bad guy anymore, and they're in pursuit to show the world that they're actually good guys. Now, the thing that's interesting about this adaptation in particular is that this is actually going to be written by Eaton Cohen. 
And with Ian Cohen, he has done a lot of comedies throughout his career. He has written the script for movies such as Tropic Thunder, Get Hard, and also the upcoming movie Holmes and Watson, which is going to star Will Ferrell and John C. Riley. Now, he has done some animation before where he did write for shows such as King of the Hill and American Dad, but what's very interesting to note about Ian Cohen is that this will actually not be the first time that he will be collaborating with DreamWorks Animation onto a movie. Back a decade ago, he actually did work at DreamWorks where he wrote the script for Madagascar Escape to Africa. And overall, that's pretty much the big thing with the bad guys is that it will be turned into a movie by DreamWorks Animation. And when reading, like when reading about what this is all about and how DreamWorks is going to adapt this into an animated feature, honestly, I really don't know what to expect about DreamWorks Animation when they're going to release this. And honestly, it made me reflect back on how DreamWorks Animation is in terms of their record. And honestly, DreamWorks is actually the company that you never know how the movie is really going to come out. Because with the bad guys... I see, I can honestly see it go into three different directions. And this can go with all of their films. Because there are two in particular that really does reflect upon what happened last year. Now, if you may recall, back in 2017, DreamWorks Animation actually released two films where they're both, coincidentally, are based on children's books. You got The Boss Baby and you got Captain Underpants. Now, the thing is with the bad guys, it could go into the direction of the boss baby, where they won't really have a lot of material to work with, there's barely a plot, there's barely anything, it'll just focus mainly on the comedy and just the characters, and it'll end up as a pretty poor movie. Or, it can go into the direction of Captain Underpants, where it will take full advantage onto the comedy and take full advantage onto the source material to give us something that could be highly entertaining and a lot of fun to watch that will make us fall in love with the characters such as Mr. Wolf, Mr. Shark, Mr. Snake, and Mr. Piranha. Or, uh, it's a rare occasion, but it can happen that it could even turn out to be a masterpiece. This could be their next big film, like with How to Train Your Dragon or Kung Fu Panda. There is a possibility, and that's the thing with DreamWorks Animation. Because usually when it comes to animation studios, it kind of gives us a little bit of an idea of how a movie could actually come out. Like, for example, when you would see a movie that would be released by Disney Animation, you would put up your optimism knowing that considering that they have a really good track record with movies such as Wreck-It Ralph, Frozen, Zootopia, and Moana, there's a very good chance that the movie that they will have coming up might actually be really good, so it would be worth a watch. But it can also work the other way around in a negative sense where you would get companies like Sony Pictures Animation. Considering that they got a really poor track record in recent years with... Uh, like uh, the Smurf movies, the Hotel Transylvania films, the Emoji movie, the Star, and all that kind of stuff, when they would have a movie out, you would put your expectations to a level that is really low. So you're not 100% sure if that movie would have any sort of entertainment value. So that's the big thing with animation studios is that they would give us a stepping stone of well, how this movie could possibly be. Do we really trust it or not that it could come out as something that we would enjoy? But when it comes to DreamWorks Animation, it's a freaking gamble. You never know what the fridge you're going to get. And those three options, it can apply to any of their films. It could turn out pretty enjoyable. It could turn out to be a piece of crap. Or it could turn out to be the next big animated masterpiece. Who the fridge knows? And this really does apply to the bad guys. I mean, that's the weird thing with this is that I could see where it can work and I could see where it might not work. And honestly, I just don't know how to feel about it. Like, I want to stay, like, honestly, because of how I could see where it can work, I am pretty optimistic about it. Like, I do hope for the best for Eaton Cohen and DreamWorks Animation to pull something great out of it. But honestly, I can also see where it can fall flat, where it could just end up being like one of those movies that we've heard all the time about the bad guys wanting to be 
good guys or bad guys turning into good guys. You know, movies that we've already got, like with Wreck-It Ralph or Despicable Me, or even some of uh, DreamWorks films, like with Shrek or even Megamind. So really... This movie can go all over the place. You never know with DreamWorks Animation. I mean, it is best, of course, to be optimistic and hope for the best that it will come out as an enjoyable animated feature. But honestly, you never know. Maybe this will screw things up. Maybe it'll come out fun. But I guess the only thing we'll have to say is just, we just gotta wait and see because... We cannot judge this immediately, especially the fact that this is coming from DreamWorks Animation. You need a lot more stuff to know if it's really going to work or if it's not. Because And even with the concept itself, th again, it's something that you could see in a way that it can be successful and it can turn out to be a good animated flick or it could turn out into something that is dumb and it would just fall flat on its butt. Who knows how it's going to be, but again, I do wish Eden Cohen and DreamWorks Animation the best. We don't have a release date for it, but the only thing I can say about it is just, well, we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, moving right along to our next story, we are going to be talking about one of the animated features that's going to be coming out this summer, and of course I am talking about... Teen Titans go to the movies. I'm sure that there are plenty of people out there that are really excited to see the release of this feature film. But apparently, Warner Brothers Animation actually made a big announcement regarding a particular actor that's going to be appearing in the film, and it has a lot of people talking, but not necessarily for the reasons that you may think. And the person that I'm talking about, of course, is actually going to be Nicolas Cage, in which he is going to be playing the role of Superman in Teen Titans Go. Now, this announcement actually came right at the same time when Warner Brothers Animation also revealed that there are going to be some cameos from some singers as well, some singers and songwriters, including Hail Z as Wonder Woman and Little Yachi as Green Lantern. I hope I actually say their names correctly. I am actually pretty well known to uh, mispronounce some names, so if I did mispronounce them, then I do apologize. So, basically, that is the big thing with it. And on top of that, Nicolas Cage and uh, Halsey and Lil Yachi, they will be joining alongside the cast. That will consist of uh, Will Arnett and Kristen Bell, whom her role has actually been revealed to be playing as the director that wants to give the Teen Titans their next big break in terms of a movie. And of course, it will feature the cast from the original hit animated series on Cartoon Network, which includes Scott Menville, Carrie Payton, Hayden Walsh, G Greg Sipes, and of course, Tara Strong. Now, what's very interesting to note about this news in particular is that the reason why people are really talking about this, the reason why this was pretty big news, is not necessarily because of Nicolas Cage joining Teen Titans Go to the Movies. It's not really the factor of the movie itself that's making the news. It's actually because people view this as a second chance for Nicolas Cage. A second chance to actually be Superman. Now, some of you might be wondering, what the fridge am I talking about? What do, you, what do I mean in particular that this is Nicolas Cage's second chance to be Superman? Well, let me send you back in time about 20 years ago, approximately, in the mid-1990s, when Nicolas Cage was supposed to be the star for a big budget version of Superman, or like, kind of like a reboot of Superman that Warner Brothers really wanted to make, which was called Superman Lives. And there was a very fascinating history with Superman Lives. Originally, it was supposed to be directed by Tim Burton, in which um, he was supposed to do like to Superman like what he did with Batman back in 1989 and with Batman Returns. And it went through many different versions of the script, and I do believe the last one was actually done by Kevin Smith. But three weeks before they would start filming, Warner Brothers decided to ultimately cancel the project. And it really is unfortunate because 
Warner, like everybody who was working on the film, like they were really prepping things up, like getting a script ready. Uh, also trying to test out Nicolas Cage as Superman, trying out his costume, uh, seeing how it would look and all that kind of stuff. But ultimately it never really happened. But this is one of those canceled projects that people were really fascinated about. They were highly intrigued with this Superman Lives, so much so that a documentary was actually made uh, called The Death of Superman, What Happened, that was released a few years ago, which even included some interviews from Kevin Smith and Tim Burton. And I think it was actually a Kickstarter campaign that really got successful, and which is why it ultimately got made. And if you guys haven't seen The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, I highly recommend you do so. It really is uh, an interesting look into the making of this movie and how it ultimately not happened. But there is one thing that I must warn you about that project though, is that I don't think you're going to take Nicolas Cage seriously as Superman when you see those pictures. Like, I'm not dissing the guy or anything, but it's just that he doesn't have a face that says Superman. And when you look at the pictures of him, like in his Superman costume and with long flowing black hair, it just looks like one of those pictures that you would find on social media where you would take a random picture of a character or a celebrity and you would just randomly slap Nicolas Cage's face on it. It's just weird. And what's even weirder is that when you look into some of the archive footage or even some of the old pictures, there are some of them where Nicolas Cage doesn't even have the long flowing hair. It's just him with the regular like balding-ish hair where like... You could see a lot of his forehead, but it doesn't necessarily count as being bald. And honestly, it just looks absolutely ridiculous. It just, it looks like a head swap, like onto so something else. No pun intended. It looks like something out of Face Off that, like apparently some kind of Face Off spinoff where Nicolas Cage's character just wants to replace his face with Superman, and then, and now Superman has to go flying around with Nicolas Cage's face. But, yeah, honestly, when I first heard about the news, going back into Teen Titans Go to the Movies, when I first heard about the news that they brought in Nicolas Cage onto this, one of the things that it made me thought was way back when I first heard about this project, and it made me think that they really are going for a promise that I wanted them to do. And the promise that I said that I want I want them to go and not hold back onto the craziness. For the filmmakers of Teen Titans Go to the Movies, I want them to have whatever idea that they have, like whatever crazy plot that they would do for this movie in particular, to not hold back and to crank up the craziness onto Eleven. Like, maybe it'll turn out highly entertaining and enjoyable, or maybe it could turn out so bad it's good. Just make it crazy to the point that it's going to be a wild ride no matter what. And when I heard that they would bring in Nicolas Cage onto the movie, it, they, it really does sound like they are delivering on that promise, and hopefully we will see something crazy out of Nicolas Cage. Like, one thing that I would love to see coming from this movie is if for some reason they would have Nicolas Cage just be like how he is at the start of uh, Face Off, where he's just acting completely bonkers, and just do that for Superman. Just go all out and be crazy with it. That would actually be a lot of fun to see. But then again, considering of what the plot is about, and if I may read uh, through my source here at CBR.com, uh, if you want to hear a little bit of what the story is about. In Teen Titans Go to the Movie, Robin realizes superheroes have received films before they have. Furious at this injustice, he takes the other Titans to Hollywood in the hopes of getting their big screen treatment they deserve. So from there, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that might not be what they want to do with Superman and with Nicolas Cage. Like, honestly, in terms of the plot, and I can understand if they would go with this, is if they would have uh, Nicholas, uh, if they would have Nicholas Cage be more straightforward, try to be more serious with his role, considering that with Superman, yeah, like, he is one of the biggest icons in DC history. 
So he would be the one that would be more straightforward. The guy who has like a whole bunch of movies under his mantle. So who knows how they could go with it. But then again, there is a possibility that they could actually go into the route where they would do a satire onto the DC Cinematic Universe. So they could really poke fun at Superman. Like he's going to get a few beatings in himself. I, I, and I don't mean that literally. I mean like... Just a lot of disses considering the quality that was released with movies such as Man of Steel and uh, Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice and uh, Justice League. I can pretty much guarantee you there is a very good chance that we might even get like a CGI, uh, like a CGI joke about removing his mustache. Like that could possibly happen as well. But what's actually very interesting is that when I do see the reactions to how people see this is that they are be they are being pretty hopeful and that maybe they could even do a joke related to Superman lives considering that they do have Nicolas Cage as the Superman that was going to be Superman but wasn't that maybe they could do some kind of related joke onto that. And maybe if they can pull it off and they could do it well then I would highly encourage it, but honestly, we would just have to wait and see. I mean, the only thing that we have seen from Teen Titans Go to the Movies is just the teaser trailer, and already that one is just being bombarded by haters because they want nothing more but to have the franchise to be dead, and that's pretty much it. So, honestly, I don't know how it's going to come out with Nicolas Cage as uh, Superman and Teen Titans Go to the Movies, but it is honestly a very interesting casting choice. And already I am actually seeing a lot of people that are changing a little bit of their attitude towards Teen Titans Go to the Movies. Like, of course, there's a whole bunch of people that are nagging and complaining, saying that, oh, it's going to be the next cancer of animation. It's the next Hitler of animation. Oh, this is going to be the next Emoji movie and all that stupid bull crap. And, you know, like, you'll see a lot of those dumb comments whenever the subject of the Emoji movie, not the Emoji movie, but I mean, like, whenever the subject of Teen Titans Go the Movies brought up, but but considering that they did bring in Nicolas Cage onto this, like you are seeing a lot of people that are changing their attitude a little bit and now they're being intrigued and they are willing to actually pay a ticket to go and actually see Teen Titans go to the movies, which is honestly very interesting. I know I'm going to do it regardless, like even if it is for the purpose of reviewing or whatever, I just want to see like the madness that would possibly ensue in Teen Titans go to the movies. So honestly, yes, I am one of the very few people out there that's actually very excited to see how this movie is going to come out. So I'm definitely rooting for it. Uh, not rooting for it as much as The Incredibles 2, but definitely one of the, one of the not miss movies for me of this summer. So if you guys are interested to see what Nicolas Cage has in store as Superman, and if you are interested in checking out Teen Titans Go to the Movies, then all you have to do is wait until July 27th for the Teen Titans big premiere on the big screen. Alright, so coming on to our next story right over here, we're going to be talking about another voice that's going to be added into an upcoming animated feature. But unlike Nicolas Cage in Teen Titans Go to the Movies, this one in particular I'm not necessarily excited about because I have went through this before and it's honestly really not pretty. And what I'm talking about is going to be Pitbull who will be in the upcoming Ugly Dolls movie. Now, for those of you who don't know, STX Entertainment wants to put themselves into the ring of animation. They want to put themselves into the competition to be up there, hopefully, with Illumination, Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks, Blue Sky, and all those people. And one of their first movies that they got is Ugly Dolls, which is going to be directed by Robert Rodriguez. And the first person that's going to be a voice in the film is actually going to be Pitbull. Yes, the same Pitbull that is the uh, singer and songwriter for uh, songs such as Timber and Give Me Everything. And also, uh, there's also another recent one. What was it? Like, it, it played a few times on the radio and stuff like that. Like, uh, it's the collaboration with Christina 
uh, Aguilera. It's like, uh, like I want to feel this moment. Or you, you know the one where Christina Aguilera is like, oh, this moment. I just want to feel this moment. And then it would rip off uh, Take On Me. And uh, anyways, with all that said and done, yes, it is that Pitbull that's going to be in Ugly Dolls. Now, if I may read a little bit of my source here in The Hollywood Reporter, it stated that Pitbull, born Armando Christian Perez, will write and perform an original song for the Ugly Dolls film and lend his voice to one of the key characters. STX is also eyeing Pitbull for spin-off Ugly Doll projects now in development at STX TV STX Digital, and STX Surreal VR. So it, it does also say a lot about uh, the entire franchise of Ugly Dolls that not only do they want to make an animated feature, but they also want to do some major projects. Where in this case, they also want to do an Ugly Dolls TV series and also like an Ugly Dolls virtual reality project. And if I may go ahead and read from a quote here from the chairman of SCX Films, Adam Fogelson, Pitbull's amazing musical creativity and magnetic personality have captivated millions of adoring fans around the world. We're thrilled to collaborate with him and look forward to showcasing his signature talent as we build the Ugly Dolls franchise. Now, the reason why I'm not necessarily looking forward onto having Pitbull into the project is mainly because... It all sounds way too familiar. This is the exact same thing that happened back in 2013 when Blue Sky Studios brought in Pitbull to be in Epic. Man, many of you maybe have forgotten about Epic. I, I, it, it's actually one of those movies where the animation is absolutely beautiful, but the script is actually pretty weak, which is why nobody really talks about it anymore or why it just faded away onto obscurity. But I do remember with Pitbull's involvement in that film where he actually did a song in there where he collaborated with Beyonce and he also provided the voice of this Toad character and that Toad only appeared in just one scene and literally that's it. Like they only gave Pitbull like five or six lines and that's pretty much it. But let me tell you, those five or six lines... They are pretty cringy. They are actually not that good. Pitbull is no actor. I mean, yeah, they, they did bring in Beyonce to pretty much do the same thing that Pitbull was doing in that movie, where uh, she was there to lend a voice for one of the characters and to also go and write and perform an original song for the movie. And at least with Beyonce... Like, yeah, she could be a great singer, but she's also a really good actress. And the performance that she gave in Epic is actually very good. Pitbulls, however, no, he's not. He is a rapper and should probably just be a rapper because he is not an actor whatsoever, honestly. And um, wh wh what's actually funny is that, uh, like, I could definitely guess that when it comes to Pitbull, like, they just brought him in for the purpose of marketing. Like, the fact that they got Pitbull in there, and it, it, it's a little bit like with Justin Timberlake with Trolls, that, like, the main purpose why Pitbull is in there is just to write that original song. It's not necessarily to be the voice of one of the characters, it's just so that he can actually go and write this song that hopefully it will be a hit in its own right and it will have a reminder for people about where that song came from you know try to be the next happy or try to be the next can't stop the feeling but with this one they're hoping pitbull can do something like that but for ugly dolls you know that, that that's basically the main thing that i am expecting with this but then again who the fridge knows? Like, there is a, like, I'm not saying that Pitbull is going to suck in Ugly Dolls no matter what. I am open to the option that maybe Pitbull is going to come out amazing. Like, he will, he'll probably give us a performance that will blow us away and will show his capabilities as an actor and open up many doors that he can have a new career as an actor on top of being a rapper at the same time that could be a possibility but honestly i'm just speaking through experience that 
Last time this happened, it didn't go well, and I'm not expecting this one to go that well either, so... Honestly, who the fridge knows what's going to happen. I'm pretty much guessing that Pitbull is mainly there for marketing purposes and to write them what they they hope that is going to be the next big hit. But if you guys are interested in checking out what Ugly Dolls has in store, then all you have to do is just wait until next year for the movie's release. And so finally, we are going to go and end this off with Animat's pick of the week. And this week, I would like to dedicate this to a personal friend of mine. Now, don't worry, he's not dead, he is perfectly fine, his health is great, and he is uh, going through a good step in his life. Like, he is going very well. However, he is entering upon a new chapter onto his life, and onto that new chapter, he decided to go and make some big sacrifices. One of which is actually a big project that he has worked on for many years. And in a way, it is sad that he would have to step away from that particular project since it did grow a little bit of its own fan base. And this is actually a name that you might find pretty familiar. I am talking, of course, about Joey Tedesco. And uh, th this, this week, recently, Joey Tedesco announced that he is ultimately going to be ending off Cartoon Palooza. The last video is actually going to be released next month, and the reason why he stated that he wants to end off Cartoon Palooza is mainly because of two reasons. Number one, life itself. Life has changed since he first started making these videos eight years ago. And he saw that, like, there's been a lot of things that pretty much change. Uh, life itself, of course, also the culture of reviewing, the animation community has changed, and of course, Joey himself has changed. And the second reason onto why he decided he's no longer going to be making any more Cartoon Paloozas is because he doesn't find it enjoyable to make them anymore. He no longer finds that creative spark in order to go and be motivated to create more of these cartoon paloozas. And considering how his life has pretty much changed where he doesn't really have much time anymore, he figured that there isn't much point, uh, there isn't much of a point to keep on going with cartoon palooza. So ultimately he's going to hang his coat and move on with his life where now he's going to be shifting his, po his focus onto his own personal stuff, onto his own job, onto his own well-being, and all that kind of stuff. And that's pretty much the big thing. Now, he did state that maybe this is not the end. There is a possibility that sometime in the future, maybe not in the near future, but somewhere in the future, he could bring back Cartoon Palooza in a brand new way. But for now, he just wants to step back and just focus on his own life. And honestly, looking at that, it really is uh, quite a bold move. Now, in case you guys probably don't know who Joey Tedesco is, uh, Joey, like I said before, for eight years, he actually ran a YouTube channel and has been producing videos called Cartoon Palooza. Now, he may not necessarily be uh, an animation critic that many people know about, like, his popularity is not necessarily in the range of, like, Saber Sparks or Pan Pizza, but he did grow a little bit of his own following, where his YouTube channel has a total of 8,400 subscribers, and he has released uh, some relatively popular reviews of his own that has reached, like, a uh, like, not just thousands of views on each of his reviews, but some some of them would even hit uh, the five digits. So, you know, he's not the most popular, but he is one of the more notable ones that has a little bit of his own following. And yes, technically it is true that, like, in recent years he has released less and less videos, but knowing him personally, that is because... It's not because... He doesn't want to do them anymore. It's like the big reason is actually due to his life where he got a lot more busy and it takes away a lot of his time 
from actually producing his videos and these videos are really labor inducing like he does put in a lot of effort onto each of them and it does sacrifice a lot of his time and a lot of his social life and I can speak as a video producer myself that yeah making videos can eat up a lot of your personal time where your life is basically mostly sitting in front of a computer trying to create your own art instead of really having a social life going into bars and you know like having the life that people would expect from you in a sense but ultimately he decided now it is time to go and you know let it go and pretty much move on and honestly i can understand the steps that he is going into and mostly about losing that creative spark and for someone like myself i've been doing it almost uh the same time as joey that i've been doing it for more than eight years as i'm recording this and i do understand about uh the fear of losing that creative spark where you don't feel like you don't really want to make these videos anymore um if i can have a confession to make lately uh, I have been getting a lot of self-doubt onto myself. Maybe it's because of the timing or maybe it's just this time of year or something like that. But lately I do like, I'm not saying that I've been thinking about quitting making videos in general. That is not what I'm saying. I'm still going to be doing that. Uh, but I have gotten a lot of self-doubt onto myself where I feel like maybe what I'm doing with my videos is just not necessarily enough like with these with the reviews and the animation lookbacks and all that kind of stuff it's not necessarily gathering that much attention and i do it's like a part of me feels like i'm not capable of creating like the next big viral video that can help me boost my view you know boost not only my views but also my subscriber count and i kind of feel like everybody has been getting like everybody is pretty much releasing viral videos but me like easily capable of releasing videos that can make like hundreds of thousands of views and gain like thousands of subscribers daily and i'm just sluggishly trying to get up there myself like slowly but surely gaining up there and i just feel like maybe i'm not doing enough as a reviewer and that does hit onto my motivation when it comes to creating my videos now i'm not saying that the quality has been hurt by it but I i'm still doing the best i can with my videos but it's just like it really is hurting my motivation and i can understand that joey could be going through uh, like maybe he went through that phase as well which kind of motivated him to stop actually creating more of these cartoon paloozas but the big difference between joey and me is that joey does have uh, a job where he like he graduated from university and now like he is going out there in the workforce like ready set for life and as for me well some could argue i am set for life uh, it's just my job is actually making these videos but i do hope that one day i could get that creative spark back but uh like anyways that's an, like i'm not here for me uh like i, I just want to have some moment i, I just want to have a little moment where i could just speak out about how i'm currently feeling and just by watching this video just like that the video that joey has released it made me reflect a bit upon myself and how i feel about my current situation when making videos and honestly um when, when it comes to Joey and his ultimate de decision, I, de you know, honestly, I really do support it. And I really do wish Joey the best of luck. But I think uh, most importantly, uh, one thing I do wish w for Joey is that hopefully we could still stay as great friends. That we could still have a chat on social media, you know, just uh, relax, just talk about life in general, talk about how things are going like i i really do hope that we could still continue that and honestly i will have the fond memories of working with joey because th there are plenty of times when i have collaborated on a few projects with him uh there is one video that i'm really proud of the fact that i did work with him on and that is actually the review of the 2011 smurfs movie that was a lot of fun to do and so far 
that is actually my first ever video where I have collaborated with another reviewer and I was actually there with the other reviewer and it was really a lot of fun to make. And another great one that we actually did that was really awesome was uh, we did something for the Mr. Coat website and we decided that we would go and satire uh, the other contributors that are on the website. Like we would go and poke fun at some jerk with a camera, uh, Jaime Tude, uh, the animated heroine, Pan Pizza, South Jersey Sam, and all those people. We decided to go and just have a lot of fun. And then uh, there was that one point at the end when we would do like the ultimate one where we would just imitate each other. Where I would just do like an outlandish Robert De Niro impression to do Joey Tedesco. And Joey, for some reason, like he decided, like I don't know why, he reminds me so much of Toad from the Mario games. But like he did an impression of me that is just absolutely hilarious. And honestly... The videos that we have worked together is just absolutely a lot of fun and I will cherish these mo moments fondly. And even just hanging out with him when doing uh, the Smurfs review really was a lot of fun. So honestly, I just want to say overall in the end, Joey, you are an amazing guy and what you have accomplished with uh, Cartoon Palooza truly is a great achievement and you should be proud of it. Even though you, like, sure, you don't have the same numbers as Pan Pizza or Saber Sparks, but you still managed to gather 8,400 subscribers. Not many people have achieved that, and you should be very proud of it, and you should be very proud of the reviews that you have done and entertained so many people for those eight years. And I really do wish you the best of luck on your future and with your career. And hopefully we could stay good friends. And uh, hopefully I do. So hopefully you are listening to this. So I, as a fellow animation reviewer, I salute your work and I salute Cartoon Palooza. And that will be all that I've got for this week. So thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the Animation Podcast. You can go ahead and find more of my work at film-book.com. All you have to do is search for Metsir Brunet or the Animation Podcast. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at Animat505. Now, if you have listened to this podcast on iTunes or any other podcast service, do you mind doing us a little favor and rate and review this episode? That would be lovely. And if you are listening to this podcast on YouTube, hit that little like button in our video and leave us a comment on your thoughts about the news this week. Tune in next week for the latest episode of the Animation Podcast and all things animation. Thank you guys so much for listening, and until next week, see you later, dudes.